This is the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, and verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yeah, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For Yahweh resisteth the proud and give me grace to the humble. Shalom, Yesha Ella. Peace, Israel. Call her law, you law. Allah, Hayanawa, Yahweh. Baha Shum, Yahweh Shah. Baha Shum, Racha HaKodash. I'm the brother Kasa Gadal from the Camp Province of Babylon, down here in Tampa, Florida. I would like to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that taught me this truth to rule well, being great examples to his younger brothers. And peace, blessing, love, health, and wellness, and all salutation to the hopeful elect, the house of David, that scattered abroad across the four winds of the earth, who truly believe on the name of Yahweh by Shiva Yahweh and are laboring in his truth with all sincerity. Shalom. And Barak Thumb to the Aquatium, the few sisters that are listening and learning in in silence as the scriptures say to do so straight to the point let's get to the lesson first peter chapter 5 and verse 5 likewise ye younger submit yourself unto the elder yeah all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility for yahweh resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble right so this is also going into, okay, the elders and apostles, all right? And you have a lot of scoffers and a lot of mockers out there that like to come up against the elders and apostles. And a lot of these other, you know, camps and heads of these other camps came up underneath that elders and apostles. But this is also going into those brothers that you labor with that's next to you, okay? If you're a younger brother, and this brother is holding you in the spirit, you have to understand that you have to be in subjection, man. You have to submit unto these brothers, man. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, be subjected, be, you know, uh, uh, submissive unto them like a woman would be submissive unto them. No, it's about an order, man. Because it said what? Yahweh resist, resist this, resist this, the proud, Salakia, and give it grace to the humble. And when you go into the when you go into the definition of grace in the blue letter Bible, it says that which affords joy, pleasure, delight, sweetness, charm, lovingness, grace of speech. Then it says, goodwill, loving kindness, favor. Of the merciful kindness by which Yahweh exer exerting his holy influence upon souls turns them to Hamashiach, keeps strengthens, increase them in Christian faith, knowledge of uh, um, Salakia, affection, and kindness, them to the exercise of the Christ Christian virtues. This is the main point says what is due to grace the spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine grace now we all know what grace is grace is a is a time period to get right to rehearse the righteous acts okay but in this moment yahweh resisted the proud so if you have that powerful spirit the lord is not going to deal with you man the lord is going to allow your ass to, to destroy yourself man OK, because the word the worst thing is to think and believe or to feel as if your how about shimmy how a shot is dealing with you this whole time you've been in the truth to ultimately use you to wake up the elect and to destroy you in the end. man. That is the worst. So don't get all boastful and prideful. OK, amongst the brothers that's next to you. When they the ones that's looking out for your souls, man. Because at one point, you didn't have this truth until you came across the brothers. Or you didn't have this truth until you may have came across the elders and apostles. Or came up underneath the elders and apostles. Or even watched the elders and apostles or Great Millstone on down. Okay? You didn't have this truth. You didn't understand it. You didn't even have the wisdom. So why bulk up against them, man? Verse 7. Or Salakia, verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. 
Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of Yahweh, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Right, so you need to humble yourself, man. All right, scriptures say that uh, those, who are, those who are abased shall be exalted, and those who are exalted shall be abased. Loosely paraphrasing, and that's what? If you try to put yourself higher than what you really are, the Lord going to bring you down, man. So humble yourself so that in due time you shall be exalted. And that's going to be when? When those chariots are, when, those, when you get beamed up into the chariot, when you go into the chambers, when you get caught up in that cloud, okay? That's going to be your time to be exalted, man. Through the spirit of power, you held by Shemir Asha, Lord will, we be a part of that elect. <clears throat> and when I say we, meaning all of you brothers out there that's laboring in this truth right along with me, man. Okay? But humbly speaking for myself, Lord will, I be a part of that elect. So that I can come down here and fuck these devils up, man. That's when you know you're going to be exalted, man. But right now, be humble. Be a sponge. Speak when you need to be spoken to. Or speak when it's time for you to speak. Okay? That's that part of that humiliation, man. Okay? Because understand this. You may be grown. You may be an adult. And you know, if you, if you, you know, somewhere else or was in the world, you ain't finna allow no man to just speak to you any kind of way. But in this case, there's an order. So therefore, get in order, get in line, or get your ass left, man. Scriptures, then it says, casting all care upon him, for he careth for you. Right. He careth for you. Scriptures say, you did not choose me, I chose you. So if the Lord chose you, you don't think he care, care about you? If he's chastising you, you don't think he care about you? Think about it, man. You see, so therefore, why sit up here and try to exalt yourself over your elders and your apostles, man, or over your brethren? You see, let's grab this precept. Because it's all about order, man. It's all about order. Paul did not write in Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14, 40, let all things be done decently and in order. All things must be done decently and in order. So therefore, that means what? Be your ass quiet. Be in subjection up underneath the elders. Whether it be your, uh, the elders and apostles of Great Millstone or whether it be your brethren, that's over you, man. You see? Let's grab this. Let's go to... Let's go to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself. There we go with that submit again. For they watch for your souls. They watch for your souls, man. These brethren out here that's on the line, all right, or that's laboring next to you, they're watching for your soul. How? Because if you're going off, they're going to rebuke you on it. They're going to tell you about it, okay? They're going to check up on you. They may give you assignments. They may read with you. All of those things are watching for your soul, man. Because then why? Then you can have your soul right. Okay? Because you have to get your house in order first before you can get anything else in order. And once you get your house in order, that goes back to what Elder, what uh, Apostle Elder Gabar said. In order to be a good teacher, you have to be a good student. And in order for you to be a good student, you have to take correction. You have to learn to take correction. And that correction comes with what? Being in subjection. Being submissive unto the elders, man. What did it just say? Obey them. What does it mean to obey? To listen. To be respectful. To understand. To be slow to speak. I meant to be swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath, man. That's what it means to obey. You obey your parents, right? If your parents tell you to go up there and go take the trash out, regardless if you're 25, 5, 30, 40, you're going to get your ass up and go take that trash out, right? So if a brother is telling you, be quiet while you're on the line, all that extra talking or uh, whatever the case may be, then that's what you do. Why? Because this brother is over you, man. Let's bring this priest up back. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, 
but that is unprofitable for you. Let's bring that back. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourself, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Right, man. They're not doing it. They're doing it for joy. And that joy is like, okay, not, not to say, oh, yeah, damn, I just made this brother do this. I made, made No. It's more of a, okay, yeah, now the brother's understanding. I'm dealing with this brother. This brother's getting it, you know? He, 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 he's going to be, you know, he's on fire for the Lord. But if he's just doing it out of spite, that's unprofitable to you, man. And it's unprofitable to that brother. You see, because why? Scriptures say what? Every man must be accounted for. For every idle word man speak, he must be accounted for, man. So if he comes out his mouth and he's doing it really to just for grief or for anguish or for hatred, he got to be accounted for that, man. But no brother is doing that, man. We're not in a time to be sitting up here playing. We're in a time of, of, of perilous times, man. Cash and society will be here in two months. Not even two months, a month. December 13th. We're already in almost September, man. You see? Let's grab this. We're going to end it on this. We're going to end it on that James, man. Let's go to James chapter 4 and start at verse 6. And it reads, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, Yahweh resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Right. Right. We just read that. Yahweh resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble, man. So he's going to give you that joy. He's going to give you that pleasure. He's going to give you that recompense, which is that reward. Okay. He's going to give you that as long as you are humble. As long as you are in subjection. Okay. As long as you obey. Take correction. Stop being a simp. Stop being soft. Stop getting mad all the damn time when a brother come at you. If you're doing something wrong, you're going to get corrected. If you don't want nobody to correct you, stop doing shit that you know you're not supposed to be doing, man. You see? Verse 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to Yahweh. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right. Submit yourself to Yahweh by Shimei Shah, man. Give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Shimei Shah. Repent. Fast. Pray. Keep doing the will and the works. Continue in faith. All right? Resist the devil. Resist the flesh, man. Resist sleazy E. All right? Resist them damn demons in your head, man. And he will flee from you. Constantly read. Constantly watch videos. Stay on your watch. As long as you have your mind on the kingdom of heaven... Scriptures say what in Matthew 6 and 21? For where your treasures be, that's where your heart will be also. So if you lay yourself treasures here, if you constantly worried about the things here and not submitting yourself to your by Shimei Shah, your heart is not going to be on your by Shimei Shah, which the heart goes into La'ah, which means mind. Okay? Scriptures say, I will meditate on thy pre-subs and respect. And have respect unto thy ways. Verse 8. Draw nigh to your howl. And he will draw nigh unto you. Draw close. How are you going to draw close? Being in subjection. Being submissive. Obeying the law, statutes, and commandments. Obeying the, el obeying the ones that have rule over you. Okay? That's how you're going to draw nigh to your howl by Shema Shai. Seeking ye out of the book of the Lord, Yahweh by Shimei Shai, and read. That's how you're going to draw nigh to Yahweh by Shimei Shai. Watching videos. That's how you're going to draw nigh to Yahweh by Shimei Shai. And he will draw nigh unto you. Fasting, praying, and repenting. Sirach 17 and 25 says, What return unto the Lord? Make thy prayer upon thy face and offend less. Okay, reading on. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. We are all sinners, man. 
Romans 6 and 23, for the wages of sin is death. We're all sinners. But you can come out of that. You can repent. And the only way you can, and when you repent, you have to be sincere about it, man. You can't repent saying, oh, Lord, forgive me for smoking. And then you turn around and start smoking again. Oh, Lord, forgive me for being an adulterer. And then you turn around and be an adulterer slash adulteress again. That's not repenting. What are you repenting for, man? Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Repent from what it is that you were once doing and never go back to doing it, man. And purify your hearts. There go that word heart again. Ah, purify your mind. How you gonna purify your mind? With the scriptures, with wisdom. Ye double-minded. Okay, let's grab that again. James chapter four and verse eight. Draw nigh to your howl, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Right, ye double-minded. Purify your hearts. Scriptures say that the Lord know the Lord uh knows you all the way down to the deepest, darkest thoughts, man. Loosely paraphrasing. So even when you think that you're that you're the thoughts that you have, alright, even if you're thinking that the thoughts that you have are 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 clean are are let's re, let, let's like it. Even if the thoughts that you have you feel as if they're holy or they're, you know, they're not evil thoughts. If they're not on the will of your how by Shimei Arashah, they're evil, man. They're evil. So therefore, purify your hearts. Ye double-minded. Don't be trying to straddle the fence. Because the scriptures say what? A double-minded man is unstable at heart. So you can't be trying to Praise Yahweh by Hashem and with on the other hand, with on the other foot, you still trying to keep your foot in Egypt, man. Bondage. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, man. And purify your heart. She double minded. With that, I'm going to close out and give all prayers and go on the two. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakat HaKwadash. And double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone that taught me this truth and rule well. Hopefully this video was edifying to you. If it was edifying to you, then it'd be edifying to the elect that scattered abroad across the four winds of the earth. With that, DTA, Abba, Babal, Sun, Shalom.